Jim Morrison, who for a time lived in a home on Rothdale Trail behind the Laurel Canyon Country Store, may or may not have died in Paris on July 3, 1971. The events of that day remain shrouded in mystery and rumor, and the details of the story, such as they are, have changed over the years. What is known is that on the very same day, Admiral George Stephen Morrison delivered the keynote speech at a decommissioning ceremony for the aircraft carrier USS Bonhomme Richard, where, seven years earlier, he had helped choreograph the Tonkin Gulf incident. A few years after Jim's death, his common-law wife, Pamela Curson, dropped dead as well, officially of a heroin overdose. Like Hendrix, Morrison had been an avid student of the occult, with a particular fondness for the work of Alistair Crowley. According to supergroupie Pamela Debas, he had also, quote, read all he could about incest and sadism, unquote. Also, like Hendrix and Wilson, Morrison was just 27 at the time of his possible death. Brandon DeWilde, a good friend of David Crosby and Graham Parsons, was killed in a freak accident in Colorado on July 6, 1972, when his van plowed under a flatbed truck. In the 1950s, DeWilde had been an in-demand child actor since the age of eight. He had appeared on screen with some of the biggest names in Hollywood, including Alan Ladd, Lee Marvin, Paul Newman, John Wayne, Kirk Douglas, and Henry Fonda. Around 1965, DeWild fell in with Hollywood's Young Turks, through whom he met and befriended Crosby, Parsons, and various other members of the Laurel Canyon Club. DeWild was just 30 at the time of his death. Christine Fierke a former governess for Moon Unit Zappa and the Zappa family's former housekeeper at the log cabin died on November 5th, 1972 of an alleged drug overdose, though friends suspected foul play. As Miss Christine Fierke had been a member of the Zappa-created GTOs, a musical act of sorts composed entirely of very young groupies. She was also the inspiration for the song Christine's Tune, Devil in Disguise by Graham Parsons' Flying Burrito Brothers. Firka may have been in her early 20s when she died, possibly even younger. Danny Witten, a guitarist, vocalist, songwriter with Neil Young's sometime band Crazy Horse, died of an overdose on November 18, 1972. According to rock and roll legend, Witten had been fired by Young earlier that day during rehearsals in San Francisco. Young and Jack Nietzsche, Phil Spector's former top assistant, had given Witten $50 and put him on a plane back to LA. Within hours, he was dead. Witten was just 29. 